Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us. May is Asthma and Allergy Awareness Month and a, a very important time to be aware of allergic triggers in your home. Now, here to talk about some tips to reduce allergic asthma triggers is interior designer Robin Wilson, joined by allergist Dr. Beth Korn. They're here to provide some information about allergic asthma and uh, some overall management of the condition. Welcome to the program, both uh, Robin Wilson and Dr. Beth Korn. Thank you for having us. First, uh, uh, just a bit of background about yourself, Dr. Korn. I understand you are an allergist. Has that always been your main interest in medicine? Yes, absolutely. I find it to be um, very diverse, interesting, and dynamic. We're here talking about allergic asthma. I thought that asthma was asthma. What is it about allergic asthma that differentiates it from other types of asthma or allergies? Right. Well, when most people think about asthma, they think about the condition of, of someone who is wheezing, complaining of a chest tightness, coughing, is uncomfortable because they're short of breath. The majority of times when people have asthma, the trigger is an allergic trigger. And when we talk about these triggers, we mean actual allergens, like the things that you find in the home, such as dust mites, dander from pets, and where I come from, the big city, we actually even see cockroach debris. But people can also have other types of asthma where uh, they, the uh, triggers are not allergic in nature, but they can be simple things like cold air, dry air, exercise, and uh, even stress can set off someone's asthma symptoms. How do you pinpoint allergic asthma? Is there some special way that it's uh, diagnosed and treated? Yes. So if one is having any symptoms, breathing symptoms, if they're uncomfortable, one should go to either an allergist or a pulmonologist to get evaluated. And during that evaluation, they will be tested for allergies. What does that mean? They will be tested for the IgE antibody. IgE is the antibody that an allergic person makes against the particular thing that they're allergic to. So, you know, dust mites or um, um, pets. And the way that this is done is either through a simple skin test, uh, which uh, can be placed on the arm, and within 20 minutes you can know what you're allergic to, or a blood test where uh, a tube of blood is drawn, sent to the lab, and the next day the allergist or pulmonologist can tell the asthmatic what it is that they're allergic to and what triggers they have to avoid. Now, this is something that has to be done by an allergist. This is not something that you can do at your home. No, no, the allergist or pulmonologist specialize in asthma and they have a particular interest in allergic to asthma, so they're very keen on finding out what your triggers are, what you're allergic to. Robin, I understand you were diagnosed at an early age. How early were you diagnosed and what were some of your triggers? How did it all come about and how are you managing today? Well, today I am just fine. Uh, I, however, before the age of six, was wheezing all the time, and my parents took me to the pediatrician, and he prescribed multiple things, but one of the things that was key for my parents was he said, your indoor air quality at home can actually affect your quality of life. And so my parents became cleaning machines. They actually took out the shag carpet, which was a trigger. They um, recognized dust mites were a trigger, so they really uh, ardently cleaned the bedding that we slept on. And so many other things that they did um, allowed me to live a wonderful quality of life. Everyone's experience will be different, but it's really important that you work with a, with a pediatrician, uh, medical, a uh, medical practitioner to really understand what your triggers are so that you can reduce them in your, in your home. Has learning about your asthma and managing it throughout the years, does it play any role in your uh, decision to be an interior designer or are the two just coincidental? Well, it's very funny. Um, I was in corporate America for several years and the company I worked for did an IPO and I was given the opportunity to do anything I wanted. And so I thought real estate and design mm -hmm. coincided. And especially as Dr. Korn stated, when you look at buildings, how are buildings built? Are they built in a clean manner? Uh, what are some of the materials that should be used that are, uh, that are smooth, that don't allow 
just to gather. Um, and then, of course, design. Um, I built a business that has, you know, uh, really advised and helped people. Um, and my recent book, Clean Design, was the number one on Amazon. And people really review it because it has everything from the nursery to uh, the kitchen and things that you need to do. But one of the things that I think that we all have to remember is when you look at your home, you have, whether it's your living space, uh, your sleeping space, your living space, or your kitchen, they're all places that people gather, that dust can gather, that um, any other number of triggers can gather. And if you don't know what your triggers are, you might not feel so great when you come home. And that should certainly be your sanctuary. Let's talk a, a bit about breathing space. What is breathing space and why did you become uh, get involved specifically? Well, I believe if you have good information, you should share it. And I'm so thrilled that this Breathing Space campaign, which is uh, funded by Novartis and Genentech and partnered with the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, as well as the Allergy and Asthma Network, they've come together. They've created a wonderful website that has free information, tips, videos, downloadable material, and really guides people um, I think that you should tell everyone, go to allergicasthma.com, learn more, learn simple tips and tricks, and lead a lifestyle that's really fulfilling um, if you have year-round allergies. Dr. Korn, what would you say is the best way to get the conversation started or at least clarify some things when you have a, a patient, you know, such as myself who thought, you know, asthma was asthma across the board, a little bit of uh, understanding. How do you, um, how do you get there with your, with your patients? Well, uh, you know, first I want to know uh, how much a patient really understands um, about what's going on with them. So I want to know, really know how well controlled somebody is. And so I'll ask the patient, how often are you reaching for your rescue inhaler during the week? How often are you having symptoms? Is it more than a couple of times a week? Are you waking up at night because of your asthma symptoms? Is, is this, if this is happening several times a month, that lets me know that their asthma symptoms are not well controlled. If they've been seen by either myself or another doctor, and I realize that they've been on uh, oral steroids twice within a 12-month period, I know that their asthma is not well controlled. So if you have the answer of yes to any of the questions that I just asked, then I realize, and as all of us do in the field in um, allergy and pulmonary medicine, that it is time to implement change in the current regimen of what this patient is doing because they are having frequent symptoms, and we have got to minimize symptoms so that someone can have, um, and you know, a life free of asthma exacerbations. Doctor, when it comes to asthma, we've heard um, kids grow out of it. Is that a myth, or is this something that can actually happen with regular asthma as well as allergic asthma? Well, everybody's different, and as Robin said, everyone has their own stories, and there will be people who over the years will get better, but there are just as many people who over the years develop asthma. So, you know, we're all moving targets, and it's important that we maintain a very close relationship with our allergists, with our pulmonologists, so that we're monitored and that we're only taking the medications that we need when we need them, but that we're also getting enough of what we need and enough advice of how to avoid triggers, how to minimize our allergens. This is key. And once again, the website is allergicasthma.com. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. And uh, the campaign is called Breathing Space. Thank both of you for joining us today, interior designer Robin Wilson and allergist Dr. Beth Korn. Great. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm.